What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Pedro Carvalho today before his big fight with Aaron Pico at Bellator 299. Uh, coming up here in Dublin, we're not, we're not too far out now, Pedro. We're still, uh, I suppose, still in the, in the beginnings, maybe, a training camp or in the middle of it. How's, how's everything going, I suppose, as, as we're, uh, as we're a bit out from the fight? Ah, uh, all good, all good, you know, and, uh, like, in, in fact, like, uh, I train every day, you know, from January to January. That's that's the fact. But right now, it's not the, the main camp. Like, I always like to mainly be in camp eight weeks out, you know, because it's it's very intense. So right now, I'm just, uh, you know, preparing myself, getting some new techniques, uh, trying to get better because in camp, you, you don't really get get new stuff so, or really get better. You just get better at you, what you already know. You know what I mean? And, but it's very intense. So for now, I'm just, you know, enjoying training, enjoy the family because this is the last few weeks that I'm, I'm going to be with them before I, I head to Dublin and to start, you know, just 100% focus on, on, on myself and uh, on the camp. So all good, all good. And, and, you know, even though it's, it's hard to be away from the family, it's all, it will be all good also in camp. It's just different mindsets. So at the moment, are your is your family in Portugal and you travel to yeah. Dublin, or are they, are they living in Portugal full time? Yeah, no, no, we are we are in in Portugal, and and I make the the, the travel back and forth. I I'll, I'll get back to that because I want to ask you about like your trip to Dublin and all. But what you said there, I have to ask you about it because we've been talking a lot recently about skill acquisition and how people do it. And how obviously, as you just said there, it's very hard to do it in camp. So the, the skills that you are trying to acquire outside of camp now. Are they with Aaron Pico in mind, or are they just something? This is the next thing I need to work on to get better, to better myself. A, a bit of both, a bit of both. So, you know, when you are off camp, off season, um, you your mind are not focused in anything or anyone. You just focus on you and enjoy training. And uh, when you are outside camp, it's it's the most beautiful feeling about training ever because. You are not living with a uh, mindset of I cannot miss nothing because when it, when, when you're in camp you are on on killer mode and you want everything to be perfect and you are always very hard with yourself. Off camp you are not, so that's the best time of the year to try new things. Try or let me see if this works with me. If it doesn't work, and uh, and of course this specific time where we are still very far away. And, and I don't consider myself in camp, even though I'm training twice a day, every day. Uh, the intensity is not the highest. So I can always try to um, try new things specifically for Pico and specifically for myself overall. And, you know, try to see what is being working good with me on, on, on the last few years and try to get even better on that. And what he's been missing try to you know you know get the wrong schools mm -hmm. obviously like in, in camp i'm sure there's a, a shot that you've like learned before camp and used in a fight but is there has there ever been a time where something you acquired a skill you acquired outside of camp changed the camp itself and changed not just the camp but the way you approach the fight and the way that you actually approach the tactics of the fight because i feel like you know Maybe one shot could make a difference, but it probably won't make a massive difference on one technique. But if that act actual technique or a number of techniques change the actual approach, it could make a big difference. Is that something that maybe is over a longer time that that, that happens rather than over maybe one camp? Well, yes, it, it, it's never something very drastically because if you, because you don't, you're not going to change from black to white or whatever. Uh, but uh, it is. Very small things, and, and that's uh, that's what I think that it makes a difference in the fight. It's not like uh, some specific technique or a group of specific techniques. It's the tiny details, tiny details in the techniques, the tiny details in the preparation, the tiny details in the mindset. All those tiny details, it's like little bricks. And when you have a, a lot of bricks, you eventually going to have a big, strong wall. And that's how I see things. And uh, a lot of times, of course, when I have um, start to do a new thing 
which is not like if you see an overall picture, it's a small thing, but that small thing then taking to camp and trying, uh, even though it, it can be an approach, can be some specific thing, but on the long run, it makes a huge difference. So yeah, it happened several times. Uh, my focus, uh, especially after the Patricio fight, and then I had their JJ Wilson loss, which I, you know, I spoke previously. Since that time, I, I noticed that, okay, I was this very confident guy, but it's time to become a better fighter. Because uh, not that I wasn't a good fighter, but uh, I, 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 I noticed that what took me to that stage was my confidence, basically. You know, my skill set was there, but I never was working on my skill set. I work hard, you know, I always work hard, but anyone work hard. And I think it was time to focus on the long run to become a better fighter without taking in consideration confidence or this or that, just pure be, be purely a better technique fight, fighter. And, you know, I finally got start to see the results of every of this work that I've been putting together on these last three years on the Mads Brunel fight, for example. On the Mads Brunel fight, that was the best that I ever felt. That was when everything was starting to put it together. You know, then I, I, I messed up on, on, on my last fight, but it is what it is. And, uh, but even though, even though, you know, everyone watched the fight, it was what it was. I wasn't, I was frustrating with myself, but there was little things that I could see on myself there that I, it made me happier than some things that I did when I won fights. You, it, it's hard to understand, to, to, to explain, but there was things that I could see that, okay, I can see my work some results of my work there. So that's that's mainly trying to go back and answer your question. That's mainly my focus now. It's it's keeping um, the work that I've been doing, the goal, try to reach the goal as a fighter that I want to reach. And uh, and, and, I, and I'm seeing the results. I'm trying to, I'm seeing the results. I'm, I'm, every time that I'm, I'm going out there, every time I, I watch a, a, a training session of mine, I, I, I mean, starts to enjoy what I'm seeing, and that's a good sign. It's a sign that I, things are, are starting to put to getting, getting together, and, uh, and yeah, and then keep the working September 23rd. Is it very hard to do that after either a loss or a win? Because, like, you would think when you lose, you want to change something up, and when you win, you want to keep kind of doing the same thing. It must be tough to like stay on the path that you've kind of decided for yourself. Is that do you find that obviously you know the last four you've won two and lost two, so you have that experience? Uh, and, I won you, three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that one in a second. But is it is it tough to kind of do that to kind of stay steadfast in that mind that I'm going to prepare this way and this is the way I do it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. It is a lot like I think it's always easier when you lose. Because you 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 you're gonna, you pay extra attention to things, you try to find the the more the most smallest thing and try to fix it. Because if you if you lost if you really lost, something went, went wrong. Um, but sometimes you just have to realize that uh, sometimes it's not about skill set. Sometimes it's, it's about you know the guy was just more effective. You you have to take everything in consideration. Uh, how did you approach? Did you have the right approach or not? Did you have to change your approach for that specific fighter? If so, if you did everything right, what what was wrong? Did I did any mistake? Yes, no. Did the guy was just purely effective in what he did? Yes or no. So you, you have to take that in consideration. And, uh, and I think part of that, it's the experience that I had over the years and made me see that because... I remember when I was younger, and if I if I would lose a fight, I would just take all the blame on me, and that's it. And sometimes it's not like that, you know. Sometimes it was purely not your day, or the guy was just very, you know. That's uh, an unlimited number of of things taking in consideration. So you are, you just have to you know watch film, watch the fight, watch what happened, take notes. And then work on it and try to, to, to identify what you did good, 
and because you know you 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 can't you can you can't only watch for what's wrong you have to all uh, also take into consideration what you're doing good so you don't mess up and start doing bad what you're doing good you know what i mean uh, and then identify the mistakes that you you, you done there uh, and and try to identify if you you do that regularly or was just that one time thing that you did there How do you look at the Nijelski fight then obviously you mentioned it a little bit earlier on because it was it was one of those weird ones it was kind of a win and a loss and I I saw you talking about uh, judging last week as well is that something you've kind of looked at since that fight looked at judging look more how the fights are judged but uh, in totality how do you kind of reflect on that fight now where what, what are we like a year, just over a year out from it Yeah it was it was uh, in May last year uh like uh, that fight gave me a, a new perspective about approaching fight was uh, speaking about the fight itself um i'm not like i will i never said i mean i think i never said i'm not, I'm, not, i'm never going to say never but i don't say that i got robbed because the fight was close you know you know the first round was his round third round was my round so it was pretty much who you keep the second round uh fairly you know you you watch you watch the stats you watch the round itself and uh, i think uh, it's it's i think it's pretty easy to score it for me you know he had the takedowns but that was it he did nothing with takedowns he didn't try or land damage he didn't try to even stay to keep me on the ground he didn't try to progress it was pretty much that four takedowns that's all he had on, on that round in the meanwhile i was the one pushing the pushing forward looking for fight looking for finish looking for damage uh, controlling the center of the ring landing you know all these you know this is you know because this is a fight right and i think i think in and and using these and talking and talking at the same time where we were talking about you know change the, the criteria or try or at least the point of view of judging a fight we have to remember one thing this is a fight and we are looking for who wants to fight more like of course we have to take in consideration the the the, the tactical aspect but like if you have one guy that is running away from a fight score a takedown but do nothing he try to do nothing with it or just like try to just pass time on it all these have to change because of course we we, we don't want to um you know penalize who's a grappler who's a wrestler but like you can see so many good wrestlers that take someone down and work that's that's what we want to see we want to see someone there to do it and keep doing it keep working keep keep showing active like we don't want to see someone and like especially if i was like a, a um a promoter i don't want to see a guy or as a fan i don't want to see a guy that just like holds the guy down and looks at the clock and waiting for that that's not fighting that's you know a holding contest you know what i mean you you are not proving that you are a better fighter you're just proving that effectively you are you you know how to hold someone down uh but you know a lot of people will will disagree because it's it's a tactical aspect i just think that we as a, a, a mma community i think we have to save the spirit of the thing because in the end of the day this is a fight and and fighters or fans or whatever when they go to a show they want to see a fight you know and uh, i think we have to protect that protect that thing and don't let you know so because slow by slow i think this damages the sport you know what i mean and i think it's my my personal point of view Uh, we are already talking about other stuff but yeah also the, my point of view about the that fight itself i think i made more arguments to win that fight talking about the second round because yeah. it's the, the the decisive round I, d- i definitely think the judging is trending that way but i think there's probably a, a little bit more to go but yeah it's, it, i think it's interesting especially i talked to a lot of fighters who've had a similar experience to you 
and then they go kind of looking at it and they adjust the, the way the, the, you know things happen. I suppose the Burnell fight was a perfect example. We, I, I want to talk more about that Burnell fight again in a second. But can I take you back there, like 2015, 2016 for a second, when you came to Ireland? I remember uh, at one of the press conferences we had in in uh, in Dublin, you said you were dropped off right outside the Tree Arena. And you didn't know where you were going to go or what you were going to do. And we were here, what, six or seven years later, and you were still here. You hadn't gone home yet. Can you just talk to us about that time and what it was like for you and kind of the unknown you had in your life at that time? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it was the unknown, but at the same time, I was just 100% sure. It just like, it, it, I, in my, my, my mind, in my spirit, in my, in my whole being, it was like I already knew what's coming because I knew that it was all on me and I was there to work and all I need eventually was a, a quarter of an opportunity. If, if a quarter of opportunity show up, I will take it and I will and I will make it. And but yeah, it was it was really it was very hard times, you know, uh, for me and for my girlfriend when we we, we, we moved to, to Ireland, uh, find a find a place, find a, a work because I, I I end up like for for like three months for my first three months in Ireland in their cycle where I I need a job, but you also need a PPS number, but you only get a PPS number if you have a job. So it was like this back and forward until I got a a, a job in in Tala Hospital. Initially, I got that job because they 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 had the urgency of uh, replace just for the vacations the window cleaner, and then the window cleaner came back and they 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 really don't, they don't know what to do with me, uh, but, uh, so they put me cleaning toilets and it ended up being my my job cleaning toilets in the hospital. Uh, it was like hard times, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I look back at those times with such a nostalgia because I remember, you know, waking up at 7 a.m., running to the gym because I had to, to, to leave the gym early enough to, um, to make my lunch. At 1 p.m., I have to, to start work. 5 p.m., finish work, running home, change, do my bag go to the gym training until until the gym was closed i was like around 10 and then, and around you know 11 i was arriving home doing dinner around midnight half midnight i was finished my day so i could start again the next day it was hard it was very hard but at the same time i was so happy i was so happy when i was doing that because i was i was a kid pursuing my dream and i and, and even though there was days there was weeks that was like very dark because I, I didn't know what, what was going to happen. But even on those days, I was like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And I just keep repeating that to myself. And until one day after like my second fight in Ireland, my se- when I fought for the Cage Legacy fight, uh, belt, uh, I remember one day I was going to wrestling class on a Wednesday and I got a text from John and it was about a fight in Bellator 200 against Daniel Crawford. It was like a Europe favorite at the time, huge prospect. Uh, and I was like, I, I don't care. I just like, this is my chance. I knew that that was my chance. Uh, you know, you know, now we are here. It, when you came to Ireland, did you already, did you have an in with SPG? Did you know John and stuff? Or yes. Was that your plan to go? No, there? no it wasn't. No, what, no what, what, I, I, like, I like, I didn't know John personally. I just, I, like, my goal when I came to Ireland was join SVG. That was it. And be trained by John, you know. That was that was the reason why why we choose Ireland, um, because of John. Because he's the man to be to be guided with. Uh, but I, you know, I never spoke to him in my life. So uh, I remember, like, when I first saw him, I was just like a, I felt like a fanboy, you know, I was like, oh, he's there, like, what do I say now? So, but the thing that I will never forget, man, and I will never really forget, that was the thing that made me see that I was in the right place. Was that when I, I had the chance to talk with him, present myself and say say what I do. And and he just very recently, uh, Connor at that time, just very recently won the, the double champ. It was like a matter of like two weeks or something. 
and um, and I remember it was just the coach of the first ever champ champ in the history of the sport and uh, and he had like just a 20 21 year boy in front of him that didn't have a great record at all saying to him that hey I'm gonna make it uh, I'm you know I'm gonna be the best this or that and uh, normally for during my entire life every time I, I, I always say that say this say that I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and everyone like or left or kind of like look at me like when they didn't when I hurt my feelings were like eh, okay and that was one of the first times when I spoke to someone that didn't know me and I saw like he was listening to me it was like okay okay and, and like I, I didn't saw doubt on him you could see on him that okay we're gonna do this okay and like he's not a man of a lot of words but his actions it, 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 it speaks to itself and uh, I remember when I when, when I, I, I want to take a shower and I, I joined my girlfriend I was like hey this is it now this is the place now I know now I'm 100% sure there's no way back now and you know here we are again is is that kind of the the perfect storm when you have like we know john obviously his background in in science and everything it's very analytical and we hear brad katona talking about that uh, all the time but it's like that belief plus we we just heard you talking about you know analysis and things like that at the start of this the two of the, them things put together seems like the perfect fit for you and that's kind of what john has isn't it oh no it's i think john you know that's i, I consider john he is the best is the best coach in the world because Simply, I, I think it's not, it's not a case that he fits with me specifically. He fits with everyone because he just knows what to do specifically, individually with each fighter, you know. He knows that uh, even though I'm cold blood, when, when it has to be done, it has to be done. He knows that I'm also, uh, I, I don't like to use the word emotional because I'm not emotional, but he knows that if he hypes me up, I will go like like an animal, you know. Passionate. Like, uh, yeah. You know what I mean. He mm -hmm. knows. He knows. He knows that I don't look back. He knows if he, he, if he, if he comes at me going to the third round, and if he screams at me and say kill this guy, and he, and he's not that kind of guy, but he knows that he has to, he, he has to to behave in a specific way with me, and he has to to, to be to behave and, and and talk in a specific way with other guys because he knows all of us. And he knows how to trigger us, you know what I mean, in the right time or what to say in the right time. And uh, I'll give a quick example. When uh, when I on, on, on my first Bellator fight on Bellator 200, when I fought uh, Daniel uh, uh, Crawford, yeah. um, we done two rounds. First round was undeniable. His second round, I end up good, but we didn't know. Like we never know what the judge is gonna give. Uh, I think we, I did, you know, I stole the wrong, especially on on the last bit. But we never know. So he came. He just like he spoke to me like ten seconds, technically wise. And then he just like he gave me the speech that I will never. And then he's not like in a John because John is very calm. He, he doesn't like get agitated or something. And it was the first time I saw him like just like scream at me and like like. Gonna kill this motherfucker, <laughs> and man, I remember after that speech, I was so hype. I went out there like a, like like a beast, man. I didn't stop punching him. Like I don't know, I like I don't have the stats of the fight, but I throw a lot of a lot of a lot of shots, and I just and, and that was a reflection of 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 that speech. He just came to me like, "You're gonna do this for your family, for for your newborns." Kid that is coming for your country for yourself, and like in the matter of like forty seconds, he just he he he, he gave me like a a patriotic you know speech like 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 in the movies like the Rocky movies you know, and uh, and it was a game changer on that fight, and I think a big part because of that I won that fight, and because of that I'm today a Bellator fighter, and, and you know I am what I am, so. Um, it's not only on the daily basis that he, he, he guides us, he teaches, 
but it's also on fight night, you know, and just like your ability of listening to him, trusting him and and follow what he says. Uh, but he's, if he says like, hey, don't do this, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to follow exactly what he says. How high was the confidence around that time? Because I'm looking here, right, you had a 6-5 win streak. And I remember we were on a podcast once and I said, Petr Carvalho might be the best active Irish fighter at the moment. Obviously, Connor was, was away at that time. And so was like, and there was definitely an argument to be made for that at the time. You were on such a great run. And obviously, you were going into the, the Patricia fight at that time. How confident were you at that time? It must be so great to come in, like, what, the space of three years from a guy... Two, was, I think it was two. Yeah, yeah, was. yeah, it just showed up in Dublin, and next thing you're fighting yeah. for a title in Dublin, uh, in, uh, in Bellator. That must have been mad. Uh, it was mad, but, uh, yeah, but, it was, uh, but I was too much confident. Too much, too much, too much. Because I was too young, and out of nowhere, it was, it was true, like, in the movies, almost. That, uh, you know, when the protagonist kind of falls, he gets too cocky, he gets to everything. That was me. That was 100% me. Uh, because I, since ever, I was this very confident guy about myself. But then I was saying things and doing them. I was like, before the fights, I was like, I'm going to finish this guy like this. And I was doing it. And that was giving not only the, 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 the victor itself, but uh, all their kind of mystic mag things was giving even more confident. And I remember then I got the chance to fight for the belt. And for the first time ever, Portugal was speaking about MMA. Everywhere, everywhere was speaking about MMA. And everyone wanted to do interviews with me in Ireland, in Portugal. And out of nowhere, I was this big shot. And, uh, and I was only 24 years old, very mature. And uh, my confidence was skyrocket. But then the danger started, was my ego start to blow, blow, and start to grow. And my ego overtook me, basically. And I, rem I remember I got in the fight with Patricio. I walk in, and then he walks in. And I remember when he gets in the cage, I watch him. I was, I was looking at him. I was like, ah, oh, man, you are no match for... I was thinking about this. I was looking at him and, and, and speaking to myself. Ah man, you are you are no match for me. You know what? I don't even care about the game plan. I'm gonna finish you in the one round. And how careless, how stupid this is, you know. And I paid the price. You know, the the, the results were were visible. Uh, but you know, it was a lesson. Um, like I said, like I say today, like of course it will be great to win a world belt. But I do know. It's not a case of belief. I do know that I, I am going to win a world belt and it's going to be very soon. And in a way, maybe in the long run, that was the best thing to happen because if they're overconfident, Barry Eagle, Pedro won the belt. Ah, man, I don't know if then there was a way back then, you know, you know what I mean? Because I might be world champion there, but then if I would lose, would I be able to come back? You know what I mean? But because I lost on that time where I was still making, giving my, my few, my first few steps in the, in, among the elite of the sport, I was like, ah, you know what? I need to reset myself. I need to get better and stuff. I, I need to be a better fighter, not just, you know, overconfident guy. And uh, and today, I know I have all the tools, and I'm keeping getting better to become world champion because of that happened to me. And so, it was. I think it was a, a huge good um, between a very bad situation. How how good was it then? I suppose like the the vital fights in the Burnell fights, right? I, I, you know, anyone gets a world title fight and they lose, and there's always you know you you just question yourself, but like I'm sure like people outside the question, oh, is he good enough to get to that level? But then you beat Vital and you beat especially Burnell, I think, because like I remember I did predicting you know the champions at the end of the year. I think Burnell in that year, maybe the year before, was my prediction for the end of the year. He was that good, and you went in and you know you dominated that fight. It was a fantastic performance. Are those fights like the, the yardstick for you? If I can reach that level again, I can beat anyone in the world. And obviously, as we move forward, we're going into the Pico fight as well. Like, 
if you beat him, he, I think last week Scott Coker talked about him being next in line for the title. Uh, maybe even forgetting you're fighting him, you know. But if you beat him, like you must be right there or thereabouts. Maybe not necessarily next, obviously, because of the Jeremy Kennedy fight and all of that. But like that, if you beat him and reach the level you reached against Burnell again, surely you're not too far away from reaching that goal. Ah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and not only not only for, for uh, speaking about ranking wise. Uh, but about the name of Pico itself, you know, because it, like he deserves everything because he's a great fighter, but he, he is like a, a promotion favorite guy, you know, uh, and anyone who, who's able to go out there and beat him will go normally skyrocket in, in popularity, you know, and only that, of course, it gives me a red carpet to the, to the, to the belt. But it's the situation itself, you know. I, even though I lost to Kennedy, I'm still, I'm still close to the title picture. I, I, I'm on the top five. I my last my last uh, four fights, three of them was against uh, title contenders. This one is another title contender, guys. So it's more than fair that after I beat Pico, um, I'll be the next in the line. Of course, we never know what's gonna happen because. Uh, Patricio already said publicly that he's going to defend the featherweight belt, but then he wants to try again the bantamweight. So, yeah, we never know what's going to happen in the future. Uh, but who knows? Maybe, maybe I grab the mic after, uh, after, after on my post fight speech and uh, maybe, maybe I can preach for an interim belt yeah. in Dublin. Who knows? I, I, I'd watch that. Uh, two more questions. But, really but first, first, yeah. first, I have to, to focus on, on people. Uh, That's it. I would ask you just one more question about him because he's obviously a really talented guy. You know, when he came, everyone in, in his debut, everyone knew who he was. You know, he was this decorated wrestler and also a boxer. And, you know, obviously they, they matched him way too hard, way too quickly. Where do you think he is now? Because, like, it, it felt like, and we can obviously uh, throw out the Jeremy Kennedy fight maybe because he got injured in that one and, you know, things like that happened. But he was on a great run before that, came back and beat James Gonzalez. Although he didn't look amazing in that fight. Um, where do you think he is now? Like, do you think he is has reached the stage where he's a world-level fighter? Do you still think he has issues like, he, we, we, you know, that Henry Corrales showed and that Barrock showed and obviously Zach Freeman showed in his first fight as well? Um, talking about his losses... In, in, and where he is right now, I, I wouldn't say because he is a much better fighter than he was because back on those days, he, just, he was just trying to murder people. And because he was trying to murder people, it's, 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 it's like they say, you kill or you, 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 you be killed, you know, that, that's it. Uh, and now you can see that he has a way different approach. He's using his wrestling between, uh, in mix with his boxing. He's mixing things together. He's not like, rushing to get a knockout is just going in there to win uh, you, you can see that he's doing the right things um, you know people normally say I don't like to use that as an argument uh, about about him that oh he never faced like top opponents but you can see that even though even though he, 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 he didn't have a lot of a lot of top guys you can see that he is quality you can see that he's good you know because there are fighters that you just you just see that they are good. It doesn't matter the um, the opposition they have. They gonna do good, and people is do good. And the thing that me and and pretty much everyone in the gym, we all we all like Pico because it's he, 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 he's kind of the same style like we are. He goes in there to fight. You know what I mean? That's that's that that's the thing that I love the most about this fight because I know I'm gonna have someone. Of course, he, 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 each one of us is gonna have the tactical aspect, but the core, the core of, of the subject, it will be it will be there. Both of us going there to fight. Both of us are intention to hurt each other. You know, and that's you know that's the beauty. That's the the, the most I think the most. Happy thing about this fight, the, the game. It's just like I know that I'm gonna have someone they're gonna try to fight me, and uh, that's that's what I like about him. Even though that he has his, his up and downs in the road, and he did the right adjustments, but he didn't change who he is. You know what I mean? He's still the guy that goes in there and fights. Uh, not only he goes to win, 
and and, and to overwork you, but he, he doesn't try to do the easy way. That because he is a great wrestler, he, he might he could might just try to pin you on on, on the canvas and try to get some times, land some good shots. But no, he goes in there, he takes you down, and try to keep keep hurting you or try to submit you. And I think that's the beauty of it. That's that's what you want as a fan, you know, and as a fighter. I speak to myself. That's that's what I want. I want to fight the best guys, but I want I want them to bring to me. You know what I mean? I want to feel that I'm in danger. That's what I want because that's what was going to make me grow. That's what will make me want even even more. Like I always want to go to the gym, but when I have someone like like him, like I want to go extra hard. I want to be extra smart. I want to everything, and that's what makes me level up. And uh, you have you have that that, that occasion. With Weichel, with uh, with um, with Mats Bernal, that I I know well, they are were very not only they were they are very good, they are very experienced, and I knew that I have to level up, and I know that I have to level up not only because even more now because not only for the, the opportunity itself, but because not only Pico is very good technically, is a dangerous fighter, you know, I I, I, I he, he has the argument of the him and Patricio, probably the most dangerous fighters. Uh, not talking about style, but talking about being able to hurt someone because they have their power. Because not everyone has the, the ability of hurt someone. Like anyone can throw shots, but some are more effortless than others, you know, and those are the two, you know. So, yeah. I I, 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 I I talk too much, but I'm just very excited today, you know, because at the end of the day, I know I'm going to have a good fight. And yeah, and that's that's what you want. I want to win fights, but I want to win fights that everyone will remember. And I think it's, speaking from the Irish fans' point of view, it's the, you know, the biggest uh, Irish best fighter on the card is, is you yet again, as, as ha- has been for a few cards. Just the last point, or the last question I want to ask you, you know, you talk about coming to Ireland, and it's funny because when you come to Ireland training SPG, all the lads, it's basically that night for nearly the whole gym, you know, because there's going to be six or seven lads. And it's funny as well because you mentioned, you know, someone who has effortless power, and I think there's one of those lads in your gym as well, and he might have a fight coming up against Michael Chandler maybe at the end of the year. Have you, actually, have you done much training with Connor uh, in the past, and, and has, is there any plans? But as well, just being in that gym... With everyone going for the one day, it must be unbelievable an unbelievable buzz in the gym, I suppose. No, I did. I, I, I did some training with him, especially back in the day when he was training for Cerrone, for the, if I'm not mistaken, for the first of with Hoyer, I think the second in this case, the second. So around around 2019, you know, 2020 at that time. Uh, yeah, now, now I like to be honest. I, I don't know uh, how things go, 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 what it, what is gonna happen or not gonna happen. I'm not into that, you know. I'm just focusing focus on me, on, on this little corner of Europe, you know. Just just enjoy sun for now, and uh, that's that's what I'm at right now. Uh, it's sunny here in Ireland too, so, so I won't be too bad when you're. Yeah, I can, no, I know, I know. I've, I've been watching. <laughs> I'm so, roast. Yeah, I'm I remember my light here. I'm like, please, yeah. I need to turn that off. I'm roast. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn it. Uh, all right, Pedro, we we leave it there. Thank you very much for the time. I'm sure I'll be speaking to you the week of the fight as well, and uh, I can't wait for it. Best of luck uh, against Aaron Pico. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.